Glory to God. Well, tonight we continue our teaching on the platforms for open doors. We have been dealing with identifying and closing open doors for a few weeks now. We have been touching that topic and by the grace of God, we are continuing what God is doing in our lives and enlightening us with tonight. I want to talk to you about two other platforms. Hopefully, by the grace of God, I'll be able to finish these two. And so let's look at the whole matter of the platform of habitual sins. The platform of habitual sins and sinful attitudes. Let me read from Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 25. Let's see if we can get the word of God in our system. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul on, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind... I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Let me jump to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now let me read verse 18 just for clarity. But if you be led, of the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envyings murders drunkenness, revelings, and such the like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. I want to look at the platform of habitual sins and sinful attitudes tonight in a nutshell let's see how far we will get now every individual has a weakness with which we struggle every one of us there is a weakness inside of us which we struggle with and this weakness maybe it came into our lives through the ancestral door the ancestral link Maybe it came into our lives simply because of sin, because we're all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. 
or maybe it came into our lives because we begun to practice that form of attitude or that form of behavior until it became cemented in us and became a weakness in us. It has to start from somewhere. The weakness may not necessarily be linked to the character of the individual, but like I said, it may have been passed down through your bloodline and it could have been developed in what we call a besetting sin. A besetting sin is simply those sins which we find difficult to overcome. Those issues in our life that we find difficult to overcome. They are habitual. We find ourselves doing those things naturally and uncontrollably. This is what Paul alluded to in Romans 7 verse 14 to 25 where he says that there are things that he wants to do but he does not do them and there are things which he does not want to do but he ends up doing them and so Paul is showing us that there is a conflict inside of every one of us a conflict that rages in the hearts, in the minds, in the bodies, in the flesh of every human being where we struggle to do that which is good because there is something embedded within us that wants us to do otherwise. Now, we dealt with the whole platform of sin and we traced that a few weeks ago and we realized that if we do not deal with this platform of sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not have the strength, the capacity, nor the ability to deal with any other issue in our life. A besetting sin can be dealt with simply by going before God and repenting and turning away from the action of that sin and from the action of that of, 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 of that habit which we had. The continuous practice of habitual sinning opens the door for the devil to take control of that area in our life. Now, the, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, that there are certain works of the flesh that are manifest. And the Paul lists some of them. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. And he continues and he listed some of these uh, works that the enemy could find a gateway to come into our lives. Now what is dangerous about besetting sins, what is dangerous about the sins of the flesh, is that the Bible says that those who do these things, those who practice these things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If anything should scare us, brethren, it is the fact that there is something that could stand to separate us from God's kingdom. Now that's the danger that we are looking at. That's the danger that I am bringing to you tonight. That there is something that stands to separate us from the kingdom of God and it is something that we should take note of. What is that thing, that habit in our life, that practice, that continuous habitual sinful practice that we refuse to let go of, that stands to separate us from God's kingdom? We need to take note of what these things are. And we need to deal with it because our salvation rests not just on our acceptance of Jesus Christ, but also on our walk with Jesus Christ. When we continue to allow a particular 
bad behavior, bad deed, bad action, sinful practice to become a habit in our life, what happens is that a strong man takes control of that area of our life, takes control of those desires uh, of, our, of, of our heart, as well as our ability to resist the temptation of those desires. A lot of times the reason why many people are not able to deal with besetting sins, it is because a strong man has now taken over the person's ability to resist the temptation of that desire and this is now where the individual needs help needs deliverance to break free from that area but it begins with you acknowledging that look i have a problem i have an issue that can stand to separate me from the kingdom of god that can stand to cause me to lose my salvation the bible says that the people who do these kinds of things in galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to verse 21 it says, look, these people, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They stand to be separated from God's kingdom. We shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. And so to bring it home to us, Paul says, everyone knows the kinds of bad things that weak people want to do said so these things these things that paul listed he said these belong to weak people and he listed them he said they have sex with people they are not married to so he's referring to married people here and he calls it adultery they do things that are bad and dirty they worship idols they do magic to hurt people they become enemies and they fight one another. They are jealous of other people. They become very angry. Don't hold on to that anger. It can stand to prevent you from inheriting God's kingdom. They want to please themselves and to be important. Those who cause trouble. They make people belong to different groups. Segregation, division. They want things that belong to other people, covetousness and envy. They are drunkards. They have wild parties. Hmm? And they like to do many other bad things like those. So I warn you again, as I have already warned you before. Listen, when the apostle warns us, we must take heed. And if the Holy Ghost sees it fit, to put the warning of the apostle in scripture, we should, we should take note even the more. He said, as I've warned you before, people who continue, now this is the operative word here, people who continue to do, continue to do, it means that this thing has become a practice. This thing has become a habit. This thing has become a norm in your life. It has become the way of life for you. People who do any of these things, continue to do any of these bad things, they will not receive good things from God. They will not receive the kingdom of God. God has prepared those good things for the people who belong to his kingdom. And so I want you to understand something here, my friends, that habitual sin is dangerous. I'm not talking about a one-off mistake. I'm not talking about a one-off issue. Yes, that stands to cause you to lose the kingdom if you do not repent of your sin. 
But what about those? Paul was talking to the Galatian church. He wasn't addressing sinners. He was addressing the Galatian church, a church that was born out of the apostolic womb of the apostle Paul. He was addressing them because they, 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 they went away from the grace of God. They went away from the goodness of God and from the blessing of God. At one point, I think Paul said, who hath bewitched you? And so this church had a problem. They were taking the grace of God for granted to the point where they were doing bad things habitually. They were doing things contrary to the nature of their Christian life and their new creation position. I have often heard some Christians talk about, oh, my anger. No, 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 no. If you continue to embrace your anger, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is not me saying this. This is the scripture saying this. I can't fight with scripture. I can't fight with the word of God. If we continue to embrace lustful pleasure, impure thoughts, spiritism, hatred and fighting, jealousy and anger, constant effort to be better than others, complaints and criticisms, if we continue to embrace division, envy and murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and all sorts of things that are contrary to Christian principle and action. We stand to become a cast away from the kingdom of God. Here in the book of Galatians chapter 5, Paul said something that I want to point your attention to. He said, now the works of the flesh. Now he used a word that I want to just bring to your attention. It is the Greek word ergon. It means work. Ergon simply means work, act, deed, or the product of something done or achieved. It is work as in employment, business, or occupation. So here's what Paul is saying. Your employment, your business, or your occupation, your work, your career, what you do for a living. If that which you are doing for a living is towards the flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, there are some of us, we, we, we do some kinds of works, we do some kinds of occupations, some kinds of, take some kinds of employments, and we say, oh, God understands. Yes, God understands that you will go to hell if you do not change. It's not the end that justifies the means, my friends. God understands that if you do not change, you stand the possibility of causing your soul to go to hell. Then work as in the acts, something that is done. What are you doing? Are your works fleshly? The things that you are engaged in, do they stand to send you into hell? Because we, we, we might not be thinking about these things. Because it is the norm for us. It has become a way of life for us. So we don't think about it. But the things we are engaged in and the thing that is done, is it fleshly? Does it stand to cause you to lose the inheritance of the kingdom? 
ergon is also the product of something that is produced from our efforts whether in art technology thought economics in whatever it is the product of what is produced now what is being produced from your actions does it stand to cause you to miss the kingdom of God these are some of the questions you need to ask yourself in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 it says every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built upon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire well this is in the context of the work that we do for the kingdom of God but in the context of the word the Greek word I'm talking about the product of what is produced from what you do is it fleshly or is it spirit and so the the actions of our life the sinful thoughts the sinful ways the sinful behaviors do they stand to cause us to lose our inheritance in the kingdom every work of the flesh that Paul mentioned has a demon that can attach itself to that behavior and to that corresponding gateway or doorway in your life impure thoughts for example may be allowed through the gate of the mind hatred may have been allowed through the heart complaints and condemnatory criticisms through the mouth lust through the eyes pride through the desires of the heart what we need to do is to check and to see where do I stand am I living daily as an adulterer you might say to me but prophet I am not married so I I don't commit adultery but you look at the man you look at the woman and you lost in your heart Jesus said you have already committed adultery it is dangerous to permit fleshly behaviors in our life because we may find ourselves in a position where we think we are standing but the truth is we are falling away and losing our salvation repenting of sin is important turning away from bad behavior is important every individual that comes in contact with Jesus Christ and with his Holy Spirit begins a process of change in their life there is no Christian who is truly converted and remains in sin none there is no Christian let me say it again who is truly converted and remains in sin you will begin the process of character change of character transformation because of the Spirit of God that is inside of your heart working in you we must identify those things in us that are fleshly that have become a norm habitual that we have grown to accept 
as a part of our character and persona but they are ungodly they are not of the spirit they are of the flesh and they stand to cause me to lose my inheritance and my place in the kingdom when we repent of sin repentance is not just word of confession it is act of turning away it is a decision inside of you you ask me prophet how do we stop a bad behavior how do i stop a habit that has been with me from the time i knew myself until now it's an easy answer decide to stop if you don't decide to stop, you will not stop. You have to decide in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, by your will, that you will stop this. If you don't decide to stop, you cannot be delivered from that thing. You cannot be free from that behavior. You cannot experience change in that area. Stop doesn't have an in-between. It doesn't have a beginning and it doesn't have an end. Stop is just stop. There is no process in stopping. You either stop or you don't stop. It's as simple as that. We make things too complicated. We make things too difficult. We have been so used to the 10 steps to this and the 5 steps to that and the 6 steps to, to, to the other that we forget that there is one step to change. And it's called repentance. One action now. Turn away. Turn away. Change course from the behavior from the attitude, from the dirty character, from the thing that has been holding me captive in a sinful lifestyle. What is the thing that you have around you that is causing the habitual sin? Some persons might be hooked on pornography. Well, get rid of the porn material. You might be hooked on masturbation. Well, get rid of the dildo. You might be hooked on adultery. Well, get rid of the man that you're having sex with. Stop means to stop. It means to turn away. You might be constantly envious of other people and what they have. Well, get your own so you don't have to be envious of them. Stop simply means to stop. Turn away. Jesus didn't give any process that you should take one step tomorrow and the next day you take another step and uh, two, two weeks time you take another step. Because every time you, you, you're taking steps, the devil gaining ground on you. Well, why not just take the step into Jesus full stop? Take the step into Jesus and end the habitual sinful attitude. The same way that you decided to start this behavior is the same way you can decide to stop it. The moment you decide to put an end to it, that's it. But if you continue to say, this is me, this is who, how I am, this is how I have been, you will not change. You will not enter into repentance. You will not enter into that place of victory over that sin that has been controlling you. Decide to stop. If you're a drunkard, get rid of the wine bottles out of your house. If every time you smell the wine, you become tipsy, well, stop smelling it. Leave it alone. Decide to stop. Decide to stop. Decide to stop. 
the moment you repent the moment you turn away from the practice of, of habitual sin is the moment your victory has begun once you do this the platform of the enemy will be removed and you are able to deal with whatever demonic issues that you have been confronted with you can have a better life a more victorious life by the spirit of christ if you yield your will to him what is it that you are entertaining in your flesh that is causing you to be in an habitual continuous practice of sin remember what the word of god says that those who continue those who continue to do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who continue, those who persist in the activity, those who resume after an interruption, those who remain in that state, those who carry on with the behavior shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So what is it that we need to do then? We simply need to stop. And that is what I am bringing to you tonight. Stop. Discontinue. Abandon it. End it so that your position in the kingdom will not be in jeopardy let me read what paul said again so that we will get it in our spirit tonight and hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to us he said they which do such things shall not this is galatians 5 verse 21 those who do those who continue those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god habitual sins are dangerous habitual sins the danger of it is that it stands to cause us to lose our inheritance in god's kingdom hallelujah let me see if i can deal with the platform of spiritual attacks okay the holy ghost is saying no don't go there ma cobra sataraba glory to god hallelujah let us change my friends let us change the way we have been behaving behavior is everything in the kingdom what is your behavior as a child of god what has been your practice as a child of god how have you been living your life as a child of god you see people might not see you when you are doing certain things people might not know that you are doing certain things some of these things that paul listed in in galatians chapter 5 are not things that can be easily seen with the naked eye these are behaviors that some of them they are secret some you are able to see for example like drunkenness but how do you see envy how do you see hatred how do you see strife and wrath how do you see these things these are conditions of the heart behaviors of the heart that god sees and he says look if we continue in this practice if we continue 
in this kind of behavior we stand to lose our inheritance in the kingdom i think if if nothing wakes us up this should wake us up seriously that we should take a look at our heart take a look at our behavior take a look at our action take a look at the way we have been living take a serious look at the things we have been doing are they bad things or are they good things the things that i'm doing do they stand to cause me to lose my inheritance in the kingdom of god the things that i'm doing do they stand to cause me to lose my blessing of salvation this is serious business my friends this is serious my inheritance in the kingdom is everything if i'm going to lose my inheritance in the kingdom might as well i was never born if i'm going to lose my inheritance in the kingdom of god having given my life to christ ah i don't even know what to say to that one jesus so i'm appealing to our spirits tonight i'm appealing to our good sense tonight that whatever it is that we have been doing we have been practicing that can be categorized as the works of the flesh tonight make a decision to stop that's all the spirit of god is asking us tonight besetting sins can be broken besetting sins can be destroyed paul said who will deliver me who will deliver me from these things he said but i thank god through jesus christ my lord i thank god through jesus christ my lord our lord yes these sinful behaviors make me a wretched man yes there is a conflict within me that when i want to do good evil is present yes there is a war that is going on within my members that when i want to walk in the spirit the ways of the flesh present itself but i thank god through jesus christ that i am able to overcome it all through it all i have learned to trust in jesus jesus cannot do anything for you or for me if i don't decide to let him in i have to decide to let him in i have to decide in my heart to let him take control of that area of my life and the first thing that i need to do is to decide to stop and when i decide to to stop then the next thing is to stop there are no other 10 steps to this and 12 steps to that no the same way you decided to start it must be the same way you decide to stop glory be to god he is able to deliver us from our weaknesses hallelujah